A little over a month ago, I set out to learn Unreal Engine. Zero experience, starting from scratch. We set up a first person character, we learned how to make an environment, we then added sound effects to our character, and last episode I added a functional menu system. This week I planned on implementing objectives into my game, but when I went to test the prototype, I noticed something strange. A small bug where my character could use their sprint sound effect while standing still. I thought this should be an easy fix. Little did I know this would end with me spending two weeks rebuilding my entire movement system. You see, after I found this glitch, I found others. Not with the code for sprinting in itself, but the code that switched between my character's sounds. And prepare yourself for a lot of theoretical code talk, because most of this week was me figuring out this bug. The code that was causing all the problems was the code I made in week 3. Originally, my code looked like this. <sighs> Simpler times. But this was too simple, and I needed to add a few variables. You can see here if the player hits sprint, the code will set the walk speed to 450, then switch on the new sound effects. But we don't want this to happen if the character is standing still. And with my code already so messy, I figured the first thing I should do was clean this up. The first thing I did was group all my sound effects and put them into a collapsed graph, then made it purple. This just holds all the sound effects that we want to reference. Then I went up here and made another collapsed graph. This graph has the code that turns on my sprinting sound effects. That's why this graph is green. This red collapsed graph is the code that turns my sprint sound effects off and my normal sound effects back on. Next I split all the code that changes my walk speed into two different functions. One is called start sprint and the other is called stop sprint. Now we can access this code very simply with multiple inputs. For instance, if I'm sprinting, I could now hit crouch and it could lower my walk speed, then switch off my sprinting sound effects. This was super simple to make, but also had a few issues. For instance, if I were sprinting and I hit crouch, I would want to switch from the green graph to the red. But if I was standing still, we wouldn't want this to happen. It would be like if I kept fading in during this sentence. And I still had the issue where if I hit sprint while standing still, I could activate the sprint sound effects. My initial solution for this was I would add parameters that the player has to meet in order to switch the sounds. This was almost the correct solution, but still had a few issues. I tried making it to where if you hit crouch, it would only change the sounds if you were moving faster than the max walk speed. But this would also fail the switch if you were sprinting against a wall, as you would technically be standing still. I tried tons of different configurations and honestly made it too complicated for myself. Which I can't even go into all the details as I didn't record most of this. If I did, there would be like 500 gigabytes of footage for this video alone. This was days of me using trial and error, watching videos explaining different nodes, and experimenting on my code. There was so many times, I genuinely thought I permanently broke my character. I kept having the thought, why am I even doing all this? My character was working better before I started messing with it. But I knew my character just didn't feel smooth enough, so I knew something had to be fixed. I very often needed breaks, and even took a couple days to mess around on a side project. Nothing big, but I was curious how hard it would be implementing a body for a first person character. I grabbed the third person character template, scooted the camera up, added a sprint, a crouch, and even a head bob, but that's when it all started going wrong again. My character would start twitching if you walked into any object. I could clip through things if I crouched. I tried setting up a door blueprint but this didn't work at all for me. This side project was supposed to be fun, yet here I am having more issues than I am on my main project. I figured I had my fun with this, but I needed to get back to my main project. The main issue I was having on my game was I couldn't figure out the best way to switch between my two breathing states with all my different inputs. We had my movement input, like your WASD keys, the shift input, and the crouch input. Until I remember a tool from the first week. 
the set timer by function name. I had set up one of these for my depth of field mechanic. And a quick reminder for those of you who may not know, what this does is get a signal from the engine whenever you start the game. Then you can set it to loop, like in this case, it loops a signal every 0.2 seconds. So five times a second, it checks to see where my depth of field should focus on. I figured I could use this tool and have it check once per second how quickly my character is moving. My walk speed is 150, so if my character is moving at 151, it'll turn my sprinting sound effects on after a second. This honestly has worked great. My code is way simpler now and works way better than before. It's honestly strange how that is. And I enjoyed when the game finally worked. But there was a lot of suffering in there too. My character still has one issue I am aware of. Essentially, when you uncrouch, if you jump, it interrupts the animation, causing the screen to jump. It should be a simple fix, but honestly, after fixing all my sound issues, I needed a break from fixing bugs. I mentioned last video that I wanted to set up an objective blueprint. Well, after watching multiple tutorials, I got a semi-functioning system. I can place a blueprint out from my content table and name whatever the message is. The hard part was I needed a way for the player to fail the level. I managed to set up a blueprint called Reset Box, where if the player goes into this box, it should disable the controller input, fade the screen to black, change the player's position, change the player's rotation, fade the screen back in, then give the player control again, and reset the objectives. There's definitely some issues here. My input never gets disabled. My rotation doesn't change. My body cam overlay doesn't fade in with the screen. But there's an even bigger issue that I didn't even consider last video. Video. I think I want my game to use a checkpoint system as well as auto saves. Currently, if the character saves the game, it will save the level as well as the position. But I'm gonna need to set up a system where if the player passes through a certain area, the game will save a checkpoint, and if you were to save the game, it would load whatever the last checkpoint you set was as your saving position. I guess that'll have to be through a checkpoint blueprint, but it's been long enough. We've gotten a lot done this week, let's take a break and make another environment. I know a lot of you tell me it's too early to be making environments or worrying about graphics, and I definitely get the critique, but I'm also not a game studio. I don't have a deadline I'm trying to meet, I don't have a budget, I'm doing this for fun. And as much as I loved solving my sound issues, it took me weeks to even do that, which is often draining on the mind. And there is so many of you in the comments who have said you've given up on the engine because of an issue that gave you trouble. I don't want to give up, and so the best way to keep me inspired is through level design. Not only is it my passion, but for someone like me, it's probably the most relaxing part of game development. You see, when you're designing an environment, you can multitask. I can easily listen to music, watch a show, talk with chat on Twitch. It's a very passive part of game dev. Whereas most other parts of game dev require your full attention. With something like audio design, you can't even listen to music in the background as you have to focus on the audio of the game. I don't want it to sound like I'm shrugging off your advice, as I definitely appreciate all the comments you guys leave. I just want you guys to understand why I frequently take time to design levels that I often don't even plan on using. Many people understand the importance of taking breaks in game dev, and what better way to take a break than by honing my level designing skills. This week I figured I would do something simple. I also tried to understand Nanite with this environment as I've heard that Unreal Engine 5.5 is best with Nanite when it comes to optimizing environments. I'm sure that'll start some debates in the comments, but don't yell at me. That's just what I heard. We can always set up experiments in the future, but as for now, we're just having fun with it. We got some important progress done this week, not only with our first person character, but also with my comprehension of the system. For the past few weeks, most of the issues I've been having have been things that you won't find a solution for off of a tutorial series. The tutorials I used in the first few weeks were great for setting up the initial functions, but it took a lot of work to properly add on to those functions. But we're getting there. This character model a month ago didn't even have a sprint sound. Now we have it switching between different inputs almost 
moves seamlessly. And once we get this character model perfected, all we'll have to worry about for a while will be environmental design, animations, and sound design. All the fun parts of game dev, which I'm super excited for. And if you're interested in seeing what I'm doing early, go follow me on Twitch. You can get notified when I go live and see what I'm working on before the next video comes out. Though no promises. There's usually a direct correlation with how hard I'm struggling on some code and how much I'm live on Twitch. Struggling with code is hard enough, but struggling with some code with an audience is straight up brutal. Brother, this guy stinks! Either way, I'd still love to see you guys on there. And if you're new here, you can watch the rest of this series here. Line